Hello everybody, welcome back to JC Fishing. Today, instead of fishing, I'm actually going to be talking about all of my pike fishing gear. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of pike fishing lately, um, because the season is slowly starting. Uh, and I'm just going to have a um, chat about what I use, what you should probably be having in tackle box, whether you're an avid fisherman or whether you're somebody who wants to get started in pike fishing. These will be the number one tips that you need to know for that. Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the bar and reel and the line. Um, already pike go huge, over a meter thirty in the lake. I think that the record is a meter forty in Lake Geneva or Lake Limon. So that, when you think about it, is an absolute monster. That is, I mean, it's this big, right? Really. There. Yeah, you need a heavy gear for those pipes. You don't want to be taking off a fish like that. So, my combo that I use is the um, it is the Okuma Komodo SS. So it's a pretty big reel. It's a 400 size reel um, with the Weston W4 Power Shad. Um, the reason that I have such a big reel, and uh, we'll discuss it later, but the main reason is because when you're throwing big 22 or 30 centimeter lures, you want to have that extra power when you throw. You don't want to have a little reel like that every time. So that is number one reason. Uh, number two is that I wanted something that feels sturdy and fish on it. I like to feel fight, of course, but I still like to feel that I'm not going to break off at any moment. Talking about breaking off, you're going to need some sturdy line. I believe this is 65 pounds. Um, yeah, this is 65 pound, uh, 23 millimeter, uh, re, re, gin, braid. I definitely I love them. I buy a bunch of stuff from them. Uh, so yes, it is braided line. You need braided line in the lake. It lets you go really deep because you really need to reach those points, um, where not much bait fish are going to be and where those pipe are going to be ambushing, uh, prey that does go down there. So yeah, you're really gonna need braid. If you don't have braid, you can still, of course, use mono or anything like that, but that's my preference. Um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the leader. You probably cannot see a thing on the camera, but yeah, the leader is very important. Um, I have on, I believe, a 90 pound uh, steel wire leader with a little snap on the end of it. I buy these made from Stuki Fishing Swiss, they're great. I've never broken off on them. Uh, if you tie a strong enough knot, uh, I'll teach you how to tie a knot in a further video. And uh, yeah, so you have you need to make sure that you have a steel leader. If not, they have 700 teeth. They will break you off. I mean, it's common sense at this point. And now we're gonna move on to the lures. I have two main types of lures that I like to use. I like to use extremely natural or uh, fire tiger or fire tiger. Yeah, fire tiger lures. Um, already in the extremely natural, I have this Savage Gear Line Through Trout. It is a small one, uh, very small actually, um, and it is a rainbow trout coloration. So it is very smaller for the lake, uh, but still really good. I mean, the rainbow trout coloration is excellent. It's perfect. Um, the next colors I'll use are these kind of green perch, miscolored lures, great. Pretty small one, but yeah. Um, yeah. So the other colors that I talked about are fire tiger lures. So this is actually a jerk bait, so a rogue bait, you could call it. So it kind of just goes in the water. It'll just jerk off to the side when you uh, do a quarter of a rotation with your reel. That's great. Um, and this one is a divinato, very common lure in the lake. This is a fav one of my favorite colors, or a plain white. Um, the reason for it is that you can see that it has this spoon on the back and when you go up and down, it looks like a dying fish basically. Um, and it's a great lure, I really recommend it. They're pretty expensive, they're about 20 for these. Uh, it's about 20 francs for each of these lures actually, so yeah. Um, the next lures that I'm gonna talk about is these. These are basically just a smaller version of the glide bait, but I use them as just a simple straight retrieve. I'm using a weedless hook because when I fish these, I fish in thick weeds. 
as well as with a tiny little flashing spoon on the bottom. This really helps get their attraction, I mean, it really does. This is another one that I recommend. Most of these are, are Savage Year because uh, I love them and they're, yeah, they're a great brand. And yeah, uh, so these, you can either just rig them like this or you can put a small stinger on them. They just come like, and then the final tip that I have to give for lures is these. I have two of the same ones, just bigger and smaller. I think this is an 18 and this is a 22 centimeter. I have these great different versions. This one, I have a screw or cork head on it with a uh, pre-made uh, stinger, just kind of hanging on it with in it. This swims great. The other one I have is this same coloration, but instead I have a Texas hook so that it can move really freely everywhere that it wants to go. That's the main point of a Texas, uh, of a, a weight at the front here. So you need that ball weight that's kind of free. Um, and then of course I just use the stinger again uh, on the bottom, two hooks instead of one because it's a bigger lure. And then the last lure that I'm going to talk about is this. This is a Savage Gear Real Eel. I believe that this is the 30 centimeter version. Uh, and I believe that it comes in at about 70 grams once it has the jig head and the sting on it. Um, it's a great lure, again, very natural, uh, dark colors, which is great. It creates a really nice silhouette with the light when you're using it. And it has a really good hookup ratio. And again, it's super big, so it'll have a big profile underwater. You get a hungry pike, you're, he's gonna go for it. I mean, yeah. So a tip that I usually give to people in the lake is don't hesitate to go with big pike in the lake. They're very active. They're like big lures, like big, 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 big lures. I've caught a small 65 centimeter, I'll put a photo of it here, like on a decently large lure. It was about this big, uh, still 18 centimeters, not huge, but still in the lake. Go with these size lures, don't go small. You can if you want to, but that's absolutely your choice when it comes to it. Uh, the final tip that I have, but I don't have one with me, um, and I'm kind of this one, is you can see that the bottom is almost transparent white. That is great, because if you're fishing in extremely clear water conditions, where you can see all the way through and it's like crystal blue, you're gonna want to have a white um, bottom or just a white plain transparent lure because light will go into it and reflect out and it creates a really strong profile for it underwater. And that is a very good fish attractant. If it's very low visibility, you might want to go with a fire tiger lure or just your simple roach coloration. And yeah. Uh, and a tip that I have is you should always mix it up. If you haven't got a bite with a lure in 45 minutes, switch it up. Uh, often when I fish in a team, um, competitions or stuff, I'll have one person start off with a paddle tail and then another to start off with a curly tail. If those don't work, I'll have somebody keep going on a paddle tail because these often produce the most fish and then somebody might go on to the divinetto. If the divinetto doesn't work, I'll have somebody still stay on the paddle, on the soft paddle tail and then I might have them go on to a, a, a glide bait or just a jerk bait or something like that. Keep changing it up. You really if you, you might, sometimes you might hit the jackpot with the fish and they might want everything. Sometimes they'll only want one lure. Uh, that most often happens kind of in the summer. And so, yeah. And then also you're going to want to mix it up. Pike basically never see these lures. They never see curly tails. The most thing that they see is a shad. They'll often see a uh, paddle tail soft bait. So if you have these, they, they, they'll be like, oh, that's new. I've never seen one of those before. Why not take a bite out of it? That is the main thing that you're going off here. And another thing that you absolutely need if you're fishing from a boat is you need a small fish finder. I have a wooden boat. I can't put a fish finder on it for a multitude of reasons. A, it's very expensive um, and yeah, all of that. So it's, it's kind of hard. But with this, you can take it anywhere. I believe that it's about 320 uh, francs. You can take it anywhere. You can charge it anywhere. It's an absolutely fantastic thing to have. Uh, you can just clip it onto your rod, your rod if you're even fishing from the shore, like so, and then just cast it out. It's about 100 grams, so you have a heavy rod, you should be able to be fine. And yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching my video. Uh, I hope, I wish you the best fishing. 
it's beginning to become peak season. Chances are you'll catch one. Um, I'm looking at you, Connor. You better catch one. Please do. And uh, yeah.